Hi, in this video we are going to learn about substrate level phosphorylation. So let's look at what is substrate level phosphorylation. So when the phosphate group of a substrate is transferred to the AT ADP in order to make ATP is called a substrate level phosphorylation. So the key important part here is the phosphate group which is actually derived from a substrate is added onto ADP and as a result ATP is produced. So this is an important concept and in case of glycolysis this is the key mechanism by which uh, ATP is generated. So let's look at the glycolysis process in a bit more details. So this is the glycolysis steps. So you can see here there are two uh, steps where ATP is generated and this is also known as the payoff phase and there is an investment phase as well. In the payoff phase where the ATP is generated you can see the phosphate which is attached to ADP comes from a substrate. In the first reaction in the first reaction where 1,3 bisphosphoglycerate is converted to 3 phosphoglycerate in that situation one of these phosphate group is transferred to the ADP in order to make ATP and in case of phosphoenol pyruvate to pyruvate con con conversion the, phos uh, the phosphate group is added to ADP and ultimately it generates ATP. So let's look at this process in a bit more details. So let's first draw the structure of 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. So we draw the structure of 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. So the 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate structure is somewhere like this. So in the third position and in the second position there is a phosphate group, right? So this is the first carbon, this is the third carbon. So there is two phosphate groups here, right? Ultimately what is going to happen is this phosphate groups are going to be transferred on ADP, right? So two reactions are happening simultaneously. Here ADP is actually going to be converted to ATP and the phosphate which is going to be acquired in order to make ATP comes from 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate and 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate is one of the substrate for glycolysis. Uh, that is why it is also known as substrate level phosphorylation and what it would produce after making ATP. Now after the next intermediate it would produce 3-phosphoglycerate which somewhat looks like this. So here the phosphate group is taken away and in the third position the phosphate group is intact. So this structure is now known as 3-phosphoglycerate. So this is one of the reaction of the substrate level phosphorylation and let's talk about the next reaction or the next step of it. So the next step is actually conversion of phosphoenol pyruvate to pyruvate. I mean this is the last step of the glycolysis pathway. Now in this process let's look at the structure as well just to get a better understanding. So here is the structure of the phosphoenol pyruvate. So the phosphoenol pyruvate is in and all. So you can see here this is the in part and this is the all phosphoenol pyruvate and it is ultimately getting converted into pyruvate and the phosphate group is taken away, taken away by whom? Taken away by ATP in order to generate ADP, right? A a ATP is produced but ADP is taking the phosphate group, sorry for that, but a ADP is taking the phosphate group, ultimately it is generating ATP and this phosphate group by which the ATP is produced, it comes from 
phosphorinol pyruvate which is another substrate for glycolysis pathway and that is why these two steps are known as substrate level phosphorylation and substrate level phosphorylation later we would discuss is a key mechanism by which ATP is generated and especially cancer cells and the stem cells use this mechanism for their energy purposes and they don't prefer other pathways like Krebs cycle or uh, respiration or oxphos pathway to generate energy they solely depend are dependent on glycolytic pathways so we'll talk about that later so if you like this video give it a big thumbs up don't forget to like share and subscribe thank you